Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up this little gem. This is a rather large bead head. This is a variation of John Barr's uh, Jumbo John. It's a, I guess, like a supersized variation of Copper John. I'm tying this one for a client, so I thought I would just kind of get a handle on that. So this is the pink version. And uh, I've also got this orange and copper version, as well as a uh, black and chartreuse. Bit of a simplified version of a copper john. Uh, this one's for steelhead and salmon. So let's uh, get a fresh hook into the vise and get tie-in. So today we're going to be using a, a Mustad signature. This one's going to be tied on a size 6 C67S. And I'm tying these ones in size 6 and size 4 for my client. I've got on here a hot pink brass bead. And for the number 6, I'm using a 4 millimeter bead. And for... The number fours, I'm using a 4.8 millimeter bead on there. We're going to add a little bit extra weight on here. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, lead wrap. And this is, I think this is uh, 020 lead. I'm going to put uh, 8 to 10 wraps on here. Just a little bit extra weight. Push that in behind the bead after we smooth that out. We'll push down the back end there. For thread, I'm going to be using 70D Black Ultra Thread. And we're going to start off right behind the lead on there. We're going to cinch that up. And then we're going to wrap up in behind the bead. Just going to make a bit of a transition from the bear hook into the lead wire there. Just this kind of helps avoid any unsightly bumps in the profile of the fly. All right, doesn't look too bad. We'll smooth the rest of that out as we go along. All right, so we're just going to take our thread down to where we want to tie in our tail here. Just going to use touching wraps of thread. We're just going to eyeball it about there. Going to add a couple extra wraps of thread and then take our thread back up a little bit. Now sometimes what I do uh, in this spot here, I'll just add like a very, very tiny pinch of dubbing just to kind of help separate out the uh, biots. Um, but something I've been experimenting with recently is just adding a little bit of uh, hot pink uh, UV. And this is from the Loon. And one nice thing about the Loon is they've got these nice applicators. and makes it fairly easy to put it exactly where you want in just a minuscule amount. So we just put tiniest little dot of UV resin there. We'll come in and set that. So this just adds a little bump and just a tiny, tiny little hot spot. So for the tail on this one, we're going to be using some gray biots. There's some blue done. So I'm just gonna take two. And what I like to do is I just take those biots, you can kind of see they've got a curve upwards. So I'll flip one over and we'll line those up. 
We just want to kind of line up the tips and then we'll push those down. I got one on either side of the hook and we're just going to measure those out. I'm going to come in here and pinch it. I'm going to add a couple loose wraps of thread and then I like to just pull towards me to tighten it up. And you don't want to let go of that until you've got the uh, biots tied in. You kind of see we've got a nice separation there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want them to kind of splay away from each other. Looks nice. And we'll just take our thread up. Now we're going to want to trim these out before we get up to the bead. And we'll just smooth that out a little bit. I'm going to try and get as smooth a body in here as we can. And the uh, reason for that is we're going to be wrapping wire on here. So the smoother our underbody is, the smoother the wire will go on. All right. So for this one, I'm doing a two-toned body. So I'm using brassy wire. So I'm going to use tan and brown. It gives it a nice segmentation. And I think uh, tan and brown, they seem to go well. They go nice with the uh, pink mosaic. All right. Let's grab a couple wires here. And I'm just going to uh, smooth out the ends here. We're going to tie them in together, wrap them together. Now I think one of these, although they're both brassy, I think one of them has a slightly smaller diameter, so it doesn't show up as quite as well, that being the brown. So I like to tie them in along the side of the hook shank, and I like to follow the contour of the hook. You want to kind of keep it on that same contour so that you don't get a spiral going on underneath. All right, so we tied that down right into the base of the biots, and then we're going to take our thread back up to the just behind the bead. We're going to leave it here somewhere, and then we want to take both of those wires. We want to start wrapping. So this might be a little bit tricky. So after you do a wrap, you can always just take your fingernail and push it back. You can kind of see the segmentation on that fly starting to form here. And you don't have to get it perfect. Uh, if you do leave a gap in between, like I find sometimes at this hump, you'll get a bit of a gap. So if you don't have the underbody really smooth uh, but that doesn't make too much of a difference it's just more aesthetics all right we got that up we're just going to tie off both the wires i like to go on top and then pull the wires back a couple wraps push them back a couple wraps over top and under just really locks in the wires really well you can uh, pull them off one at a time or you can cut them, but I find doing them one at a time with the helicopter is the best way to get rid of those. All right, so I'd say the hard part of the fly is over now. Um, so before I put on the dubbing, I'd just like to... Uh, Take a little bit of hard head here. I'm just going to add a little bit on top. And I do that just so that the dubbing really sticks to the uh, fly. And it's not all going to pull out after a few fish. So I'm going to take a little bit of dubbing here. 
and uh, we will put that on our thread. Yeah, we got a little bit on there. I'm just going to wrap that. I'm just going to form our thorax. I like to put a little bit on first before I put the legs on. So for the legs on this fly, we're going to be using these uh, glitter flutter legs in the hot pink and black. And yeah, we just need one leg. So what I do is I just uh, fold this over in half and then I'll cut it down. And then you've got two equally sized legs. You can do it for a size, fly this size. And I'm just gonna take two wraps, really loose, and uh, I'm gonna separate the legs and just kind of get them in in place. before I pull that tight at all. So now I'm just going to take a little bit more dubbing and uh, put that on my thread. And then a couple wraps over top and pull the legs back I had a bit of a figure eight in there. Then you've got a bit of extra dubbing in there. You can add a little bit more than that if you like. I'm going to trim up the legs. I like to just pull them back both at the same time. And you get equal lengths. And the same on the front. And then these will walk quite a bit when they're in the water. So the last thing on this fly, we're going to add a little bit of hen hackle. I've got a black hen. I'm just going to take one feather out of there. So all we're going to do is just where the webbing starts, I'm just going to pull that back off the stem on the top and the bottom of that. And discard that, the rest of there. And we're gonna take the tip of the feather, we're gonna pull the hackle fibers back. And you wanna make sure <clears throat> you pull the legs back so you're not tying them down. I'm just going to add a couple of wraps of thread, pull the tip back, a couple wraps under there. And then we'll come in and trim off the uh, tip. And now we've got this uh, hackle. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it all back. So we take it on both sides of the stem and we pull everything back and we're going to wrap that around and again you just want to make sure you pull those legs back so that you're not uh, tying them down you just kind of get everything back all at once and then we're going to trap in the stem here a couple wraps Pull the stem backwards, a couple wraps, and if you can, you want to get that into the bead. We'll cut off the excess stem. Uh, one thing I like to do with this is I want to make sure that that's not going to come apart. So I'm just going to take a little bit of brush on crazy glue, and I'm going to just put it a little bit on the thread here. 
I'm gonna pull everything back. And uh, make sure that that glue gets right in the front there. And add a whip finish. That crazy glue will make sure that that fly is going to stay together. But we're going to add just a little bit of insurance here. Make sure, kind of position those legs where we want them. Just a little bit of head cement up top. And this fly is ready to go. So don't forget you can try some other colors. Like I said, I've got chartreuse. And uh, the uh, orange color here, all nice little patterns, great for salmon steelhead. And my client's gonna be fishing them this winter. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, like, and if you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you could take some time and subscribe to the channel. All right, I guess that's all there is to say. Don't forget to keep a hook in your vise, and we'll see you in the next one.